everybody, welcome. It's Eric the Reptile Guy, and I'm really excited to be here with you all today to share with you some amazing, amazing animals and ponds. So to my left right here, there's a pond right there. And in that pond right there, that pond is full of salamanders and tadpoles and newts and fish and all sorts of life, and even crayfish are in there too as well. I saw some the other day. However, what's so special about this pond is that this is one of uh, one of many ponds that are in the Hudson Valley that contain tons of amphibians. And amphibians are one of the few animals during this time, this period of time, that are the, at the height of um, the the highest level of becoming extinct. Now, I know that's not good news, but the good news is that there's something we can all to do to make sure that these animals stay here for years to come and that's by using earth friendly things so we like to remind you to make sure you use earth friendly things throughout the show and we're going to start with a pledge so here's the pledge right now so everyone raise your right hand and say i promise to always do my very best to use earth friendly things and if you do that we'll have a nice healthy earth and we'll have lots of amphibians and animals for years and years to come <laughs> Now we're going to look inside the pond and we're going to observe the actual eggs of salamanders that were laid from about 30 days ago that are getting ready to hatch and have started to hatch already. And we're going to explore that right now. So let's go dive into the pond. Not literally, but we're going to go check it out. <laughs> This is the actual pond where we've been observing spotted salamanders, red salamanders, eastern newts, green frogs, and bunches and bunches of eggs for the past eight weeks. We utilized an underwater camera to get amazing footage of all the eggs. Right here, this one right here. This is the eggs I was looking at, this one right here. This is day number 46. If you look very closely off to the left, you can see one of the embryos actually moving around. 46 days earlier, this is what the eggs look like. You can see the eggs are round and small, and this is just before the cells of the embryo started to divide. This is before they had arms and legs and paddle tails and even gills that larval stage salamanders will have as we'll see soon enough. Oh yeah, they really grow, they're growing a lot. Now we're going to take a moment to observe oh, wow. a video of who exactly laid these eggs. During the first rains of spring, an amazing migration happens. One of the first salamanders to arrive to the vernal ponds every spring is the spotted salamander. Scientifically known as Ambystema maculatum. Many organizations, including the Department of Environmental Conservation, arranged salamander crossing nights and amphibian crossing nights so that way they can safely cross the roads during rainy nights. Once the salamanders migrate to the pond, they begin to immediately start to meet each other. Hello, 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 hello. Shortly after that, the males begin to deposit what are called spermatophores. If you look closely at the video, you'll notice little white projections on top of the leaves. Those are spermatophores. The female salamander uses her back legs to locate a spermatophore. She will utilize it to fertilize her eggs. If you look just above all of the salamanders, there's actually a clear egg mass that was recently laid. 
Each egg mass can contain at least 100 eggs. Once the eggs are fertilized, the female will begin to search for suitable branches to deposit her eggs. So Eric, how do salamanders mate? Okay, so um, what actually happens when the salamanders, with, with, with the, these are salamanders, but they're considered newts, and so a newt is a salamander that has rough skin rather than smooth, slimy skin. And so the newts actually, um, they use their back feet to hold on, rather than like with frogs, it's called the amplexus, so the frogs or toads, they grab the female using nuptial spines on, or nuptial, nuptial pads on their feet, and they hold the female really tight, and this stimulates the female to drop the eggs, and then they start to drop the eggs, and they fertilize it externally. Where with the with the um, the newts, what I've observed is that the newts actually use their back feet to grab on to the female by the head, which is really strange. And then the newt will actually use the tail to drift pheromones towards the female's face to stimulate the female to want to lay their eggs. And so it's really an interesting way that they they do it. But they use their back feet. In fact the back feet sometimes I actually saw um, just recently that the um, that the back feet of the of the salamander it looked really swollen the newt it looked really swollen and I said oh what's wrong with it maybe it's because there's pesticides or something like that because it was in a, in a pond that had a lot of algae so sometimes when you use too much pesticides you get algae algal blooms and that's from a eutrophic lake or a eutrophic pond or from eutrophism and eutrophism is when you have too much fertilizer and then the, the the plants that usually suck up the fertilizer have used as much as they can and then now there's excess floating around not being used and then the algae uses it and starts to bloom and so anyway we saw a salamander like that and a newt like that I keep saying salamander but a newt like that and um the, the back feet were swollen. I'm like, oh no, it must be because it's eutrophic, but it really isn't. It's because when they become when they become mature, when they when they go to mate uh, during the mating season, the back legs get swollen because that's where the strength is. They got to hold on really tight. And the same thing actually happens with an interesting frog from Costa Rica called the smoky jungle frog, but it happens with the front legs. The male's front legs get really big and, and, and strong and they get nuptial spines. It's really strange. Amphibians are really amazing. They go through all these weird things, but like that's one of the things that I just learned actually this year about the, the newt. So the reason I'm saying that is like, yeah, I, I'm an expert on amphibians and reptiles. However, if you want to become an expert, an expert, a real expert is constantly learning. You never stop learning. You always learn new things and that's what keeps it fun. That's why I love doing herpetology and studying reptiles and amphibians because it's constantly, you're always learning and there's so many different types you can always learn something new every single day so just keep learning having fun that's it <laughs> All right.